Okay, so I have a question for you. Do any of you know who Icarus is? Anybody know who Icarus is? Yes, he flew to I missed what that was. Yes, he was, uh, he got the wings and yes. he decided to fly off and he was ignited. Right. Uh, Icarus, uh, it's, it's a Greek mythology. Uh, it was this uh, guy, and he was in relationship also to his father, and they were on an island, and all in, on and on and on. And his father made some wings for him out of feathers and wax, and, uh, and he was going to fly out of there and get help. And the father said, don't fly too high, don't fly too high. Uh, because the wax will melt and you'll fall and don't fly too low because the rain will bring get on the feathers and bring you down and <clears throat> anyway he flew too high <laughs> and uh, so um, does anybody know who Eutychus is? Eutychus. Anybody? If you know feel free to turn on your <clears throat> microphone. Okay, well, Eutychus um, is in the Bible, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's funny that their names sound kind of alike because the, the truth is they both kind of flow too high, and uh, that's what I want to talk about. Uh, the story is in Acts chapter 20, if you'll turn there with me, and uh, we'll read verse 7 through 11. <clears throat> Acts 20, verse 7 through 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. And he continued his, pre his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chambers where they were gathered together, and there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep, and he fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. And when he therefore was come up again, and had break, uh, broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, even until the break of day, so he departed. <clears throat> well, the first thing that I, I got to talk about is, is Paul's preaching. Okay. <laughs> verse, verse 7 says that he preached to them uh, and continued his speech until midnight. And then verse uh, 11 says that he talked a long while, even till the break of day, and then he departed. So if anybody thinks I preach too long, <laughs> then I want you to know that Paul has got the record. <laughs> and, uh, um, anyway, so um, notice in verse 7 that it says that Paul came on the first day of the week, and, and he was there... For several reasons. One was he was there to break bread with them. He was there to preach. I'm sure they didn't think he was going to preach till midnight and then have this incident happen and then decide, well, let's go till the sun comes up. <clears throat> uh, but his plan was to leave the next day, meaning once he starts preaching, then whenever he quits, he's leaving. All right. So, um, Verse 11 mentions that they broke bread after midnight. Okay, so this is this could be a meal or it could be something in relationship to unleavened bread. It didn't really say. Um, and so, um, uh, so Eutychus, uh, if we look closer to him, we'll look in verse 9, you'll see that information a little better now. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. 
And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So notice specifically that Eutychus was a young man. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't an old man or anything like that. He was a young man. And, but he had fallen into deep sleep. And now let's talk about sleeping during sermons, okay? <laughs> um, uh, everybody gets sleepy. Everybody gets sleepy at different times and things happen. And this particular incident could have happened to anyone. Um, it could have happened to an old man. It could have happened to a, a, a young woman, if you will. But it did happen to him. And he was a young man. And I think that's significant that it, it mentions that because uh, you would consider that maybe he wasn't a full-grown adult. You know, he, he maybe wasn't as in tune to the Word. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I'm just noticing that it went out of its way to, to mention that he was a young man. <clears throat> and, you know, the thought, of course, there, there's so many little thoughts that come to me when I was reading this story. The thought is, well, it, is Paul's preaching boring? You know? I mean, <laughs> he's, he fell asleep. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but um, uh, there's no record there of him actually putting others to sleep. So I think it was probably some pretty good preaching. But, um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're listening to someone share the word and you fall asleep, you usually will feel bad for it, you know, and, and uh, especially if it's, you know, in the middle of somebody's sermon or whatever. But physical sleep, that's... You know, everybody has rough weeks or rough days and whatever. You can't fix that. But when it comes to the heart, when it comes to the heart, that we don't have sleepiness, if you will, of the heart, that, we, that, that we're awake, that we're awake, that we're awake when the Word comes forth, our heart is awake. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but I, I know David It talks about him in his sleep, he hears the Lord. And I know I have so many times. Um, so, you know, even if a person fell asleep during someone's sermon, I think the Lord could end up talking to them. So um, the scripture says, uh, <clears throat> as Paul was long sleeping, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So, we know what Paul preaches. <laughs> he preaches the cross and he preaches it strong. So Paul almost killed him with his preaching, which is an interesting thought. I know my mind just runs through all these little tiny things as well as what the Lord's trying to communicate here. <clears throat> um, and and uh, this whole situation was an accident, and yet the Lord chose to put it in the Bible because I think it would only be there if it had spiritual meaning. And so um, there is a reality here to me that I was seeing in relationship to death and resurrection. Um, death and resurrection, not just Christianity your whole life, you know, just that's all my life is, is Christianity, but death and resurrection. and realities that flow with that and, and, the, and the heart of God in relationship to his son in relationship to those things. Um, but Eutychus uh, was in a high place. Uh, that's why I also brought up Icarus because he was, he flew too high. He, and, and I want to talk about that. I want to talk about us putting ourselves in a dangerous place. Icarus, which again, that's just Greek mythology. But uh, uh, it, the moral of the story, if you will, is that he, he, he got out of the bounds of what was safe and it ended up falling and killing him. Well, in this situation, um, this uh, uh, Eutychus was also in a very high place in that place. And and if you look at that spiritually, and if you look at that by 
you know, maybe maybe he's uh, learning and he's, you know, like Paul said of himself when he was young, I was out doing all of my, my uh, brethren and the other students um, because I was gaining so much of the Jews' religion. That's how he described it. And then he, then he described it as counting all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. But when you're sitting way up there, you're, you're able to look down on people, and that's a common problem. Looking down on people, th thinking we're up higher and we're we're better, so we we deserve higher, you know. And uh, uh, those things are that. Now, when you get into that, that's spiritually significant. Now, that has something to do with possible, quite possibly, everyday situations and everyday the possibility of us placing ourselves too high. Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus talks about it. And he always talks about taking the lower seat, you know. Um, that's the word of God. That's the word of his heart. But it's but what if it's not just a commandment? What if it's not just well, I'm God and this is what I want you to do. But what if it what if it is um, uh, kind of uh, your if if you're going to fall. You know, from either from the third loft or the the lower seat. I mean, it's it, it, even the name of it says it's lower, so it's going to be less of a fall. So, it, to to seek that higher place is to maybe unknowing to us. Maybe maybe we, you know, who knows? Pro self or something wants wants it so much, but it's it is definitely putting ourselves in a, a more dangerous situation than if you had a, you know, you know, a Eutychus is up there in the third loft and you've got a, a, an old man sitting in a rocking chair on, you know, on the lower level or, or a child sitting there listening who's sitting on the floor. If they fell, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be that big a deal compared to uh, the third loft. And um, so, you know, <clears throat> why do we, you know, why do we fall? Why do we keep falling? I mean, why do, why do situations keep bringing us down and we keep getting into stuff when, when we're, we think we're trying, but what we're maybe trying to do is to get to that higher place instead of getting into the heart of the Lord, to know the heart of the Lord, to know Him. And guess what? That, that, that pathway is through the lower seat. It's not through the highest seat up there. And um, so people are searching for answers. People are searching for prestige. People are, you know, searching for different kind of things uh, that would make them choose what kind of seat that they would choose. Um, and if someone keeps falling, then, then they're going, well, why do I keep falling, you know? Uh, and, and like I said, we could say that's an accident, but what if it's not an accident? What if it's the Lord? And the Lord knows that because we keep putting ourselves in those places, we, we may not know it mentally that we're asking for trouble, but the Lord knows, and the Lord knows our heart, and the Lord knows you know, that, uh, that, uh, that our prayers, if we're constantly saying, why, why do I keep falling? Why do I keep, you know... Uh, in these circumstances and going back or doing this or whatever. Um, and, you know, he, he would say, because you, you keep putting yourself up there. You keep putting yourself there. Um, I wrote down, it seems to them that they are trying, but circumstances keep bringing them down. That's the way it, maybe it formulates in our mind. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. That's why I climbed all the way up in the third loft. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, but circumstances keep bringing me down, you know. Well, uh, we, we assume that up there we're going to have a better vantage point. Maybe even an advantage over everyone else. Even if it was Paul or the Lord sitting down there teaching. We're not looking for advantages 
or a better vantage over others. We're just looking for the simplicity to be with the Lord. Um, so, uh, verse 10 says, <clears throat> And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. And I just thought it was significant that it says Paul, Paul went down and fell on him, okay? This kid's up three floors and falls, and, and Paul falls, but fall, Paul doesn't get hurt. In fact, what happens is that the kid basically either comes back to life or is, you know, somehow touched by the Lord. Uh, but, but because of Paul's fall, but it was a choosing, it was a choice to fall lower instead of from, from up higher. Uh, I wrote this, and your choice to be high doesn't give much room for error. That's really part of my main point I'm trying to get across. That, that as we seek that higher stuff, it doesn't give as much room for error. I mean, you know, this kid, he's sitting on the ledge. We're sitting on the ledge, we're sitting on the edge, and uh, we don't realize, you know, how bad that could be. So, um, um, I wrote, thinking of that danger, I wrote, for some people, there's little danger. They seldom have downfalls in the Lord. We go, yeah, I know, why does that happen? I mean, I, you know, I'm trying and I, I keep having downfalls and, and it seems like they never have any downfalls. And I wrote, it's not because they are super spiritual. It's because they put themselves in situations that should they fall asleep, they won't fall too much. <clears throat> it's because they put themselves in those situations. They take the lower seats. Um, uh, so verses 10 and 11 says this, um, and Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and, uh, and said, trouble not yourself for his life is in him. When he therefore was uh, come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till the break of day, so he departed. So, basically, we all get sleepy. We understand that. It's better to stay awake. <laughs> but if you get sleepy, you get sleepy. It's not, the great enemy isn't sleepiness. It's don't be too high up. Don't put yourself into danger. And then, um, uh, the the fact of Paul, uh, when all of this happened, I mean, that's why I just reread it. When all of this happened, Paul falls on him. He says, his life is in him, da da da, da. He gets back up and starts teaching. He doesn't make a big deal out of it. He stays low. He doesn't say, did y'all see that? Did you see what God did through me? Did you know that, you know, he does a lot of stuff like that through me. I'm, I'm, you know, really of God and whatever. He didn't even, it was so, <laughs> you gotta love it. It was so nothing on his part that it, even his words that he uses are, are, are so lowly and not, you know, uh, making a big deal out of the whole situation. So, um, uh, so I wanted to give you a little test. <laughs> I wanted to give us a little test today. Um, I wanted us to um, uh, to listen again to what happened. Um, listen carefully, and um, to maybe put some things together. Uh, I wrote here. Um, that the test is going to uh, be over just verses, the last couple of verses, uh, 10 and 11. Um, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to go over the story, and, and then I'm going to ask you a list of important things. And then uh, you, 
you give me what you think the answer is. Okay. So this is, uh, you say, why are we doing this? Well, this is primarily for listening skills and comprehension. <laughs> this is, this is the third grade again. <laughs> um, so, uh, so which of the things that I'm going to mention, not right off, because I'm just going to re-go over the story, uh, which of them are important to the thing that I ask? All right, so listen carefully. This is, again, now I'm just going over the elements of the story, then I'll ask the questions. And Paul went down and fell on him. That's one thing. He embraced him. He said, trouble not yourselves. Paul said, his life is in him. <clears throat> he, he had broken bread and eaten. <clears throat> He talked a long while, even till break of day. And the last one, he departed. Okay, so this is an open book test, so you can look in verse 10 and 11. All right. Um, here comes the questions. Five questions. Which of these things was most important to the boy's mom? Which of the things that I just listed off was most important? You don't have to say it perfectly, or you can just look in your Bible and, and see. Which of the things I read off of the five questions was most important to the boy's mom? Anybody? Right. Right. Yeah. His life is in him. Yeah, his life is in him. You know, she, she was coming unglued with joy. Thank you. Good, Scott. Thank you. Okay, which of these things was most important to the boy? All right. Paul, Paul came and fell on him. Paul came and fell on him, yeah. Because if he didn't, there wouldn't be any life, you know, that... You, that's the starting point. Yes, perfect. Okay. Which of these things was most important to Paul's stomach? It says that he broke bread with them. That's it. He'd been preaching all day, all night, until the early morning, you know. So, um, yeah, he broke bread with them. Um, which of these was the most important to the people? They didn't need troubled. They didn't need what? To be troubled. They didn't need to be, well, I think that, yeah, I think that's good, but mine, and yours is better than mine, mine was, and Paul departed the next day <laughs> and going, man, this guy preaches forever. I got laundry. I got to get going. <laughs> okay. And then um, last one. What would you say Paul's thought, uh, what Paul thought was most important? I'll have to short my phone. Say it again. I'd have to shorten my sermons. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that, I don't know about shortening them. I don't think he would think that, but I do think that the thing that was most important, and you got it, would be the Word of God that yeah. he was sharing. Yeah, that's right. Even if, it, even if that incident happened, even if people were tired and whatever, I think if he was full of the Lord and pouring out, then... He left feeling content. All right. So Icarus and Eutychus, both of them flew too high. One was, one was uh, Greek mythology. The other one is in the Bible. So let's pray and let's just ask the Lord to teach us how to keep ourselves out of danger and keep ourselves from falling uh, so much because we're putting ourselves in danger. Father, we just love you and 
Thank you for this simple lesson, but and thank you for these responses. Thank you for their comprehension and listening skills. Um, and, and thank you for your spirit who is here upon us to maybe bring us a simple little message that we need to, we need to realize that in putting ourselves too high, we're putting ourselves in danger. But to stay low, like Paul did, like Paul when he fell on him, that means he came low. But when Paul just didn't make a big deal out of it, didn't draw attention to himself, Father, oh, how much higher was that to you? And may we learn these simple lessons in life and in everyday circumstances. And we ask it. We ask it in your precious Son's name, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.